All right guys, today we will be talking about battery cables and why you should probably just be making your own. Let's jump into it. There are a ton of cable types out there. You have everything ranging from a 22 gauge or 34, or 36 gauge, tiny little wire, all the way up to two watt, four watt gauge wire, which a lot of you may not even know what this means. So right off the bat, wire gauging is essentially the diameter of the wire, and it allows us to have a standardized way to order, call for, so to speak, and use wire. Wire gauging is super simple. It's based off of the diameter of the wire, which will tell you how much current can flow through it. Current, obviously greater than amps. You can calculate yourself. I have a chart on the website. I'll link that in the video description below, but that'll allow you to know what gauge or what size wire you need based on the length, so the run of the wire, and what all is going to be running off of that wire. For example, a ditch light harness doesn't need six gauge battery cable. For most ditch light applications, you're gonna be using a 14 or sometimes maybe a 12 or 16 gauge wire. But in general, that'll be 14 gauge wire because they're only drawing so many amps. Typically ditch light, Baja Designs S2, uh, the Morimoto four bangers, the Diode Dynamics SSC2s, or SSC3 squadrons, whatever, they're gonna draw in the range of like two to five amps per light, really not that much power at all, don't need a big wire for it. However, when we're talking about the Garmin Power Switch or the Switch Pros, which are gonna be maxing out around 100, 125 amps, over a short run like this, you're looking at a six gauge wire. Super simple, super easy to calculate. All you gotta do is know your load, so everything's gonna be running, and then Go to that chart. How long does your wire need to be? You scroll across to the amperage and down to the length. You figure out which gauge you need. Really not a big deal. We are only offering a few gauges of wire right now because they are based on being used for switching systems and stuff. If you want a custom cable size, length, whatever, shoot us an email, uh, hit us up through the website, through social media let us know and we can go ahead and make that application specific product for you. That would be stuff like custom winch cables and whatnot, custom air compressor cables, all of that type of stuff. But at the moment, it's not something we're offering crazy long lengths of in the DIY kit on the website. We're also not offering some of the larger two watt cable sizes just yet either. We have some in stock if you want to reach out and get those custom sizes, custom diameters made. But for now is the DIY kit. We're offering, I believe it's going to be eight gauge, six gauge, and four gauge. That is what's going to be used on the vast majority of applications for our clients. So that's what we're offering upfront. See how everybody likes it. Kind of work out the kinks with the system along the way. Let's jump into the tools that I use specifically, and then I'll link below to where you can purchase those as well. Starting off, we're gonna go into the toolbox, grab our TNB, that's Thomas and Betts crimpers. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them from a lot of places. They have this adjustable wheel. This will allow you to change for different cable sizes these things are really nice i had a different set before i don't even think they're in the toolbox anymore they are not they were just so flimsy it was from one of the big amazon brands they make a lot of wiring stuff like there's a couple amazon brands i see all the time i think it's like alex tech makes braided sheathing it's really not good quality compared to true tech flex um Wirefly makes terminals. They're nothing compared to TE connectivity. Uh, so there's a lot of Chinese brands out there. And I originally started with a Chinese cable crimper just because these guys are 300 bucks or so. And 
it's okay if you only need to do some, but they're really just not as good a quality. So I really recommend you getting the high quality ones, especially because we tend to find that once people start wiring the right way, they actually enjoy it. And you'll probably be using these tools on your buddy's trucks and all of that as well. So kind of a buy once, cry once thing, with just as it is with all good tools. Now for the larger wire, and for what I occasionally end up using, I have these. <laughs> these guys are from Tool Aid. They are very large crimpers. These guys are meant for the bigger cable. And so this will essentially be four gauge all the way up to four odd. So pretty awesome. You can run eight gauge on the thick wall copper terminals but it's really not. I mean, these things are massive. <laughs> You're not gonna be crimping eight gauge connections with this. Now for cutters, I have used a ton of different cutters. Um, pull a handful of them out here. I don't even know who these are from. These guys here, they're super common. I see them all the time. I think I got them off a snap-on truck years ago. They're they're good they worked for a while they just they don't i don't know they get caught on themselves and they're not very smooth um i have them in the box for if i ever need to cut steel cable and stuff obviously not for wiring purposes and now they just get beat up but i am a massive fan of nipex i have a handful of their cutters and these guys are just so much better they're so smooth as you see like they're just they're such nice cutters. I love these guys. You know, I try to do that with these and I can barely push it up. And then obviously they're just stuck like that now. Like, same with these guys. They're not great. They're falling apart. So Nipex is the way to go. Um, I think I'm on my second set of these. I cut, thou I make thousands of cuts a year, tens of thousands of wire cuts a year. Um, these are meant for copper and tin coated copper and I guess aluminum wire. They even say on them, do not cut steel. It is the Nipex 9511165s made in Germany. Love these things, super high quality. Now, surprisingly enough, that's all the tools you really need for battery cable. You need cutters, you need crimpers, and then for the heat shrink and whatnot, you need you know, for the tech flex, you need a hot knife or scissors and a torch, which is how I'll do it today because most people don't need to buy a hot knife. For the heat shrink, you need, you can use a torch if you're using black heat shrink or non-logoed heat shrink, but it's recommended that you use a heat gun. Let's jump in and make a battery cable. All right guys, so what we're looking for here, we are making the cable kit for the Garmin power switch units. So, gonna bring this out to 24 inches. Use the Nipex to cut that right there, super simple. Now, we're gonna go to the end. The way I do it is measure off about 3 eighths to a half inch. You're gonna carefully squeeze down on that, making sure not to cut the wire. There you go. Do that on both sides. Super simple, super easy. Pull that off. And as you can see, the wire, the battery cable that we use is a dual wall insulation cable that is super high quality. Now we're going to take our cable lugs, throw them on, get these guys crimped up. And then I am doing three crimps per lug because I'm working my way down the lug to get that crimp done. Nice and nice and tight. Next, we'll grab our Tech Flex here. We're going to sheathe the wire with that. Essentially, just running it over the wire. The Tech Flex, think a Chinese finger cuff, handcuff, whatever where when you push it together, 
it expands, right? See that? So, you're essentially going to push it onto the wire, it'll expand, and then work its way down. So push them on, it'll expand and work its way down. So we're gonna do that for the whole length of this cable here. If you've done it so that you have the crimped ends, the eyelets or ring terminals already on, you want about an inch and a half or so right there when you pull it back and cut it. Now, you can use your cable cutters. I prefer to use my scissors just so I can get more cuts out of the more expensive tool on cable. You would think this type of stuff doesn't add up, but when you're doing hundreds of cuts with these things, they really do. Now, I am doing this with the torch rather than with the hot knife that I have, just because this is a more feasible way for you all to do it. Think of burning the end of a nylon rope. You just want to melt those ends together so it doesn't fray. You're going to go ahead and pull it down like that. Take all the slack out, and there you go. With about an inch and a half overhang, worked out real well. So now, I'm going to grab some heat shrink. Go ahead and get that cut down to size. Throw it over. Now, this is black heat shrink. That's because we're using carbon tech flex. So we can see that the cable itself is red through the tech flex. Pull that heat shrink down. And I use CPA 100 heat shrink. It's a really high quality heat shrink made by, I believe, made by Raykim. So you pull that heat shrink down so that once it gets shrunk down, it'll cover the end of the terminal there. All right, so now we're gonna take the heat gun go ahead and get that heat shrink shrunk down. Awesome. And just like that, you have your custom battery cable. Awesome. And just like that, you've got your custom battery cable made the length with your heat shrink, your braided tech flex, and your quality terminals. All right, guys, so when you go on our website, blazeoffroad.com, under shop, we now have a DIY tab. Every single time we drop a new video for the DIY stuff on our YouTube channel, we will be adding more stuff to that DIY tab. Ditch lights are going to be next. We also do a Garmin build kit so that when you order your Garmin ready to run kit, you'll have the video on how to install everything, exactly how we install it, it's going to be super simple, super easy instructions to follow. As you saw in this video, although it was a long video with a lot of information, you have kind of like a two minute section where we're actually building the cable. It does not take long and it is not hard to build a battery cable. And I hope that through these videos and through the instructions in these kits, I can get all of you on board with making your own electrical systems, harnesses, installing everything. I've had quite a few people that I've kind of beta tested this with, just walking them through it uh, over Instagram and videos and stuff. And people tend to find out that once they have those little resources, like the information and the products handy and available to them, they actually love electrical work. And that's kind of my goal through this whole DIY process is a lot more so to show you guys how feasible it is to do this stuff yourself. So your battery cable kit will come with the cable you need, the correct length of TechFlex, the braided sheathing, the correct amount of heat shrink, and two terminals. On the website, this is very important, when checking out on the website, you will select the critical items first, so it's gonna be your length and your cable gauge size. Now, once you've selected that, and you hit add to cart, you're gonna select the cable color and then what size terminals it's gonna come with. Those three things do not change the price at all. And so that's why they're kind of after the fact on the website. So go ahead, head over to the website, spend that $20 with free shipping and get yourself some high quality cables that you can build yourself and install on your truck to get your electrical system whipped into shape and looking very nice while still being incredibly safe. All right, guys, if you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, if you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Instagram, and hit that little like button so we can help share this info with more people to get this whole DIY electrical movement really rolling.